Hello, and welcome to another voiced article from Tank Encyclopedia. I'm your host, Dan, and today's article on the Panzajega Tiga P, or Ferdinand, was written by David B. Now, before we go on, I need you to give me just a moment for a message from the folks higher up the chain of command. As you may well have noticed, we here at the Tank Encyclopedia YouTube channel have been cranking out a whole lot more videos than we used to lately. Now, while this is great news for all of you guys, it does mean that our video editors have been doing a whole lot more work. So, if anyone who knows anything about video editing is listening to this, we're looking for volunteers. Just make sure you're punctual and can put out at least a video a week. If that sounds like you, leave us a comment. Or, better yet, slide into our public Discord. Links in the description. The Oberkommando des Heeres, German High Command, initially planned to form three Schwere Sturmgeschutzabteilung, or Heavy Assault Gun Batteries. These included the 190th Sturgabteilung, which was to be reformed and renamed into the 654th Assault Gun Battalion, the 197th, renamed into the 653rd, and the newly formed 600th Assault Gun Battalion. Each was to be equipped with 30 vehicles divided into three nine-vehicle strong batteries. The remaining three vehicles were to be allocated to an HQ battery. Once ready on the front, each battery was to be separated from the main unit and used more as a mobile close artillery support. In March 1943, the organization and employment concepts were completely reworked on the orders of General Inspector of Armored Troops, Heinz Guderian. He first reallocated the Ferdinands from the Sturm artillery to the Panzerwaffe. The Ferdinands would be given to two battalions, the 653rd and the 654th Heavy Tank Destroyer Battalion. These were, in turn, part of the 656th Schwere Panzerjäger Regiment, or Heavy Tank Destroyer Regiment. This regiment, besides the two Ferdinand-equipped units, also had a third Sturmpanzer Abteilung 216, 216th Tank Assault Battalion, equipped with 45 Sturmpanzer IV assault vehicles. Each battalion was divided into three companies, each equipped with 14 vehicles, which were further divided into three platoons each, with four assault guns and two command vehicles, plus a battalion HQ with three vehicles for a total of 45 per battalion. The change in tactical doctrine referred to concentration of all available vehicles while attacking designated targets instead of dividing them into smaller units. The Regimental HQ was officially formed on 8th June 1943, mainly from reserve cadres of the 35th Panzer Regiment. Oberst Lieutenant Ernst Baron von Jugendfeld was chosen to command. The command of the 653rd Battalion was given to Major Steinwachs, that of the 654th Battalion to Hauptmann Karl Heinz Noack and that of the 216th Battalion to Major Bruno Kahl. The 656th Regiment was transported to the Eastern Front during June 1943 for Operation Citadel, the upcoming German offensive against the Kursk salient. The main base of operations for this regiment was the Smievka train station, some 25 kilometers south of Orel. Once the vehicles were unloaded, they were driven to their designated assembly area. By the end of June, the entirety of the 656th was at its designated jumping-off point. A few days before the offensive were used for training and for the vehicle commanders to familiarize themselves with the surrounding terrain. With the three battalions, only the 653rd was fully equipped with 45 vehicles. The 654th had 44 and the 216th had 42, but many sources disagree on the exact numbers. As the Ferdinands were intended to spearhead the German advance, they were to be reinforced with a remote-controlled tank company equipped with Borgvard B-4s for clearing minefields. These small vehicles were equipped with detachable explosive charges designed to detonate mines in a wide area, and were either remotely controlled or were driven by a human. The 656th Regiment was part of the 41st Panzer Corps under the command of General Harper. Its order of battle during the initial stages of the Kursk Offensive was as follows. 
The 653rd Battalion was to support the attack of the 86th and the 292nd Infantry Divisions, while the 654th Battalion supported the 78th Infantry Division. The 216th Brigade was to follow up in a second wave, together with the 177th and the 247th Stug Brigades. Their objective was a heavily fortified Soviet position around the Malo Arkhangelsk and Ochovatka area, with its key position around Hill 257.7. The attack on the first day by the 653rd Battalion pierced the first Soviet defenses and reached its target, destroying some 26 T-34 tanks and dozens of anti-tank guns in the process. Many of its Ferdinands were temporarily put out of action due to extensive Soviet minefields. To increase the lethality of their mines, the Soviets often coupled them with artillery shells or even to aircraft bombs. While these usually just blew up parts of the suspension, some were so strong that they would damage the hull, and this could not be repaired at the front. The anti-mine auxiliary unit did its best to clear the minefields, but lost many of its vehicles in the process. Heavy Soviet artillery coverage of the minefields didn't make this any easier. Places that were clear of mines and marked as such were usually shelled by the Soviet artillery. The advancing Ferdinand crews would lose sight of the cleared paths and accidentally run into minefields that were not cleared. In total, on the first day, the 653rd Battalion lost 33 vehicles to mines. While most required only minimal repair work, the recovery proved to be difficult. In order to move one Ferdinand, at least five Sonderkraft Zoig 9 half-tracks would be needed. As these were unprotected, they often fell victim to Soviet artillery fire trying to prevent recovery of German vehicles. The 653rd Battalion would receive two new Bergapanthers, but even these proved to be inadequate. During the night, Soviet demolition teams would blow up any abandoned Ferdinands they could get to. The 654th Battalion, while advancing towards its objectives, Hill 238.1 and 253.5, also came across many minefields. Thanks to the remote-controlled vehicles, Clear roads were established with the loss of ten of the Borgvads. Still, this was far from enough, leading to the loss of a large number of the 654th Battalion's vehicles. In a memorandum dated 17th July 1943, Heinz Guderian described the 653rd Battalion's combat operation. The very heavy artillery barrage, on the first day 100 heavy and 172 light guns, 386 rocket launches and countless grenade launches smashed the attack by our infantry. The Ferdinands and Sturmpanzers were not able to push their attack in the depths of the enemy positions as the infantry had been halted. Thus, the tanks had to stop in the middle of the battlefield, attracting concentrated artillery fire. The enemy artillery always found time to regroup and to reinforce. The missing secondary armament of the tanks negatively affected the tanks in combat. Subsequently, losses were high. On 8th July, a group of four Ferdinands and 20 Tigers were advancing toward the Soviet line. On the other side, some 12 ISU-152s under the command of Major Sankovsky were waiting in ambush. Once the German vehicles came to a distance of 500 meters, the Soviet vehicles opened fire. In the following engagement, the range was reduced even more, to just 300 meters where the Tigers suffered under the SU-152's large-caliber rounds. The Ferdinands proved more resilient, but after numerous hits, they too would fall victim to the 152mm guns at close range. At the end of this engagement, the Germans lost four, or three, depending on the source, Ferdinands and eight Tigers, inflicting no losses on the Soviets. By the 11th of July, some 19 Ferdinands were reported as complete losses. Of these, Four vehicles were burnt out due to engine accidents. The remaining were mostly destroyed by enemy artillery fire, which hit the less protected engine compartment top. In addition, some 40 vehicles were temporarily out of action and needed repairs. Half of those were brought back to action by the 11th. On 14th July, any further salvage operations were abandoned and, instead, the surviving vehicles of the 653rd Battalion were redirected to support the German attempts to relieve the 36th Panzergrenadier Division, 
which was surrounded by nearly 400 tanks of the Soviet 3rd Tank Army. The Ferdinands, under the command of Lieutenant Heinrich Terriette, managed to drive them back, despite the small German armored numbers. Thanks to well-selected firing positions in the poor enemy reconnaissance, the Ferdinands took advantage of the 88mm gun's long-range firepower. During the same day, some 60 Ferdinands, 34 from the 653rd and 26 from the 654th, took defensive positions around the Shelyaberg Sarevka area. During the period between the 14th and the 17th July, the German units at Kursk were faced with rapid Soviet counterattacks. The 653rd and 654th battalions, despite losses and mechanical breakdowns, participated in German defensive operations south of Orel. Their mission was to defend the heavily contested Orel-Kursk railway line. The already poor mechanical reliability of most Ferdinands was further worsened by constant skirmishing with the Soviets. The regiment commander, Jungenfeld, reported his unit's bad shape to the 2nd Army. Elements of the 9th Army, including the two Ferdinand battalions, had been previously sent to assist this army in a report dated 24th July 1943. The regiment had been permanently in combat since 5th July. The Ferdinand, as well as the Sturmpanzer, suffered numerous technical problems. Initially, it was planned to withdraw the tanks for two to three days after a four to five day commitment to undergo maintenance and repair work. This was not possible. All tanks now need an overhaul requiring 14 to 20 days. At the end of July, due to constant Soviet pressure, it was decided by the Second Army that Orel had to be abandoned. At the start of August, the 653rd Battalion had 12 Ferdinands ready for action, some 17 in repair, and 16 that were complete losses. The 654th Battalion on the same day had 13 operational, 6 in repair, and 26 complete losses. One of those losses was, to say the least, somewhat unusual as one Ferdinand was knocked out after it was hit by a flying Panzer III. This strange situation occurred when a remote-controlled mine-clearing vehicle was hit by Soviet artillery, detonating its 350kg explosive charge. The following explosion threw most of a nearby Panzer III command vehicle into the air. Part of its chassis hit the engine compartment of a Ferdinand, setting it on fire. By mid-August 1943, the two Ferdinand battalions were being pulled out of Orel to the rear for recuperation and some much-needed repair. While Ferdinand achieved great success in destroying enemy armor, many Ferdinands, which were irreplaceable, had been lost. On 23rd August, all surviving vehicles from the 654th were given to the 653rd Battalion. The 654th Battalion was sent to Orléans in France for recuperation and refitting with the new Jagdpanther and Jagdpanzer IV. Following this, the 653rd Battalion was pulled back from the front line and stationed at the Dnepopetrovsk Industrial Center. The damage to some vehicles was such that even this center lacked proper tooling and equipment for the job. Of 54 surviving vehicles, Four could not be repaired, and of the remaining 50, only 10 to 15, depending on the source, were combat ready by mid-September. These vehicles, along with over 10 Stempanzer IVs, were used to form a Sinsatzgruppe, or Task Force, and were placed under the command of Hauptmann Baumunk. This group received orders to divide into two smaller units. One was tasked with heading towards Sinel Nikovo, and the second to Pavlograd by rail. While the Soviets held part of the rail line, after a brief engagement, they retreated. The Ferdinands would mostly be stationed in this area when, in late September, the unit was evacuated towards Zaporozhye. In early August, during a defensive operation at Krivoy Rog, the Ferdinands claimed to have destroyed 21 enemy tanks and 23 anti-tank guns. On 10th November 1943, the Ferdinands were repositioned from Zaporozhye to positions south of Nikopol. The German positions at Nikopol were well defended and supported by the 24th Panzer Division, to which the Ferdinand Company was attached. On 20th November, the Soviets managed to make an opening in the German defensive line, rushing in with large numbers of tanks in an attempt to exploit their breakthrough. 
This formation was successfully intercepted by the 24th Panzer Division and the Ferdinands. At the end of November, during the battles around Kochazovka and Mirobol, the Ferdinands inflicted great damage on the Soviets, claiming 54 tanks. Lieutenant Franz Kretschmer's vehicle alone destroyed 21 tanks, and the following day, the 653rd Battalion situation became untenable, leaving only four fully operational vehicles available. Besides these, of the 42 vehicles, some eight needed minor repairs, and the remaining needed major overhaul. The battalion received orders to be transported to Sankt Polten on 10th December 1943. The withdrawal started six days later, but, due to Soviet activity, it lasted until the 10th of January of the next year. In a German report dated the 7th of August 1943, the Ferdinands were credited with the destruction of 502 enemy tanks. 200 anti-tank guns were also reported destroyed by the German army. Three months later, another report stated that they had destroyed 582 tanks, three self-propelled guns, three armored cars, 477, or 377 depending on the source, anti-tank guns, 133 artillery guns, 103 anti-tank rifles, and three aircraft. It is not clear if these numbers correspond to reality or are just inflated propaganda. Following Operation Citadel, the German after-action reports commend the overall performance of the Ferdinand. The vehicle's most praised asset was its excellent anti-tank capabilities, demonstrated by the sheer number of destroyed tanks claimed. It had good accuracy, a long range, and possessed great armor-piercing capabilities. The more heavily protected Soviet KV-1 tanks could be effectively destroyed at ranges of two kilometers. On average, two to three rounds were enough to completely destroy any enemy tank. The ammunition, on the other hand, proved to be problematic most noticeably in the case of the high explosive rounds. The problem was mainly regarding the poor quality of the ammunition casing, which often led to clogging of the gun chamber. The loaders were often forced to improvise additional equipment to try and eject the stuck spent rounds. Another issue was the lack of a machine gun that could be used for self-defense against enemy infantry attacks. While the crew had their own personal weapons and an MG-34 machine gun stored inside, these could not always be put into use against enemy infantry. There were four pistol ports, two on the side and two to the rear, but there were none to the front. Some Ferdinand crews improvised by using their MG-34 to fire through the main gun barrel. The gun elevation and traverse were used to direct the firing arc of this machine gun. Many crews used spent casings to make makeshift mounts to provide a more stable firing platform for the machine gun, and in order to avoid damaging the rifling of the main gun when firing the machine gun through it. Installing a machine gun mount on top of the armored casemate was also attempted, but proved to be unpopular as the operator had to be exposed through enemy return fire and grenade fragments. Installing an infantry platform to the rear of the casemate was tested, however, any infantry riding on this easily succumbed to enemy fire, so this idea was shortly abandoned. To somewhat resolve this issue, the Ferdinand units were reinforced with 12 Panzer III tanks that were to act as a screen against enemy infantry and soft targets. The armor protection was deemed sufficient. During the Battle of Kursk, there were no reports of the front armor being penetrated. There were cases of the side armor being pierced by 76.2mm rounds at closer ranges. While the front armor of the casemate was more or less invincible at that time, it had one major issue. Enemy rounds or artillery fragments could ricochet into the insufficiently protected engine cover, thus causing damage to the fuel tanks or power plant. A number of vehicles were either immobilized or lost in this way. Because of this, it was later requested to add 20 or 30 millimeters of additional armor protection atop the engine compartment. The cooling system was not up to the task, as there were cases of the engine compartment catching fire after the engine overheated. This caused the loss of at least one vehicle when it, overhe when it overheated and set itself on fire during a recovery operation. The Ferdinand was noted by its crews to lack visibility and had many blind spots. Radio equipment was often jammed due to the Ferdinand's poorly shielded electric motors and generators. Temperature inside the casemate was high enough that sometimes it would detonate the vehicle's supply of signal flares. Despite its weight, the Ferdinand could relatively easily cross a 2.6 meter wide trench. 
It also possessed good climbing ability. However, their cross-country speed was noted to be only about 10 kilometers per hour. Interestingly, the new gasoline electric powertrain performed relatively well. Its power output was sometimes problematic, and some vehicles caught fire due to short circuits. The suspension was deemed ineffective and prone to malfunctions. The narrow tracks, together with the weight, caused many vehicles to be bogged down. The lack of a proper recovery vehicle was also noted, with many vehicles having to be blown up in place because they couldn't be recovered. Despite the long list of negative issues with the Ferdinand, they showed that a heavily armed and armored anti-tank vehicle had merits. They offered many advantages over the poorly armored and improvised anti-tank vehicles already in service. For instance, the Marta series.